So I've uh, moved the uh, camper and uh, brought it to a workshop. You know, uh, I don't know what I'm going to get into. I've never changed one of these water heaters before, and let alone uh, change a 1986 water heater. So, uh, yeah, you might hear some cars go by because there's a busy street right beside me. I'm not in the country. <laughs> I'm in a city. So check this out, will you? Yeah, so I'm in the city. Bill Gowdy checking in. And we are on an adventure today. Water heater went bad. Yeah. Man, it's 1986. It's the original water heater. Yeah, that's standing pilot light. The new one I'm putting in. It, it has electronic ignition. Which, uh, you know, it saves. But that means uh, it has to run on a battery. The other one didn't need anything. Uh, it did use or consume LP, but uh, it didn't require a battery or an outside power source. But the one I'm putting in works on 110 or on 12 volt, which is uh, you know a plus. It'll heat water with a 110 uh, or and or LP, so it has a faster recovery time. It only holds six gallons. Yeah, the uh, company that uh, built the original water heater is no longer in business, so I have to make some modifications. Yeah, I have to do some something different to make this work, and I have to make some connections, and uh, I have to be reliant upon a battery. But that's all right. I got a battery anyway, and I am reliant on a battery, and it will work with my uh, my solar as well. So uh, yeah, uh, let's see. The local dealer, he's 20 miles away one way 20 miles away wanted uh, $500 for a water heater and uh, I ordered this one online and got it uh, shipping free for 309 so you know there's quite a savings there but that's still a lot of money for six gallons of hot water but you gotta have it man you just gotta have it particularly uh, you want to take a shower or you want to wash some dishes it's nice so come along <laughs> I'm gonna make some modifications and uh, hook this baby up. Check it out. So this is the setup. This is the back of the water heater. And uh, it has a bypass on it so that uh, I can winterize this. And uh, this fits into the back of the... This is the water heater. This is my uh, where my LP gas hooks up. And I've undone it. And pulled that out. I've undone this uh, water line. Let's see, I've undone the water line coming in and out up here. This is still attached to the water heater, but that whole unit that should all slide out now once I undo the outside brackets. That's just how easy it is. But I want to install this bypass on the new water heater so it makes it easy to uh, uh, winterize it if I need to. I've removed the screws on the outside of this water heater and I've taken the door off. And so the whole unit should just slide out now. You see this has it had several screws screwed in and then puttied in. Yeah. Oh here's Here's a view from the outside. Now, the new one doesn't have that flange. There's a flange kit that you can buy, which I didn't know at the time, but uh, yeah, we might end up doing that. I haven't decided yet. If I can make something work or if uh, we'll get the flange kit. So it appears that I have 12 volts. That's what's in this right here. And then I have 120 volts right there, what the refrigerator uses. But I don't know if, uh, if that circuit can handle the, uh, the load of the water heater and the refrigerator at the same time. I'll have to look into that. I might have to have a separate circuit. So if the gas line is located in the front on this one, 
There's the gas valve, the uh, electronic ignition, igniter. Yeah, so I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to extend the gas line out to meet this one. That's what I'm going to have to do. This is a gas line for the refrigerator. I'm no longer using that gas line. Um, I could possibly harvest that gas line, drill a hole, drill a hole right here, and feed that, take that plug out, and hook that gas line up. Because there is gas in it, you know, gas can be that can be used. Now, and then uh, and use that plug back here because that gas line isn't long anywhere near long enough to get up there. Yeah. And then I can make the. I have to put a switch in. I have to put a switch in for the uh, for the water heater to turn on. So I'll put a lighted switch in so when it when it comes on. Uh, when I turn it on, I'll know that it, the water heater's on. You can't uh, turn this on without having water in it. Uh, the electric element will burn out real quick if you try to use electricity without water installed. So here it is, all installed. I haven't fired it up yet. I have it hooked up to the city water supply because I find that's the quickest way to fill. Yeah, the LP. I uh, checked that gas line. I use a little uh, Windex. You can use uh, liquid soap, uh, anything that you can see with bubbles. You can, I suppose you could use plain water, but if you use soap, it makes bubbles. It uh, 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 has a uh, you know a lasting effect so uh, anyway I had to tighten that connection up a little bit and I don't know if I have any water leaks or not but I'm about ready to turn on the water supply and we'll see if it'll we're, we're gonna pull it up through the city water supply So the water heater is full. Yep, that's a pop-pop valve. She's full. Now we're ready to turn it on and see if the gas will fire up. I don't think there's any water got into the burner. There's some water got in here, but uh, yeah, that's the quickest way to fill it. Is hook it to city water supply rather than use your pump to pump that six gallons full. So I've installed a toggle switch, a lighted toggle switch for the 12 volt side right here, right next to the thermostat for the water heater. So when the light's on, it means there's power to the to the water heater. That should be arcing and pretty soon uh, the air will come out of the gas line and uh, that should light, I hope. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, you got a nice flame going. Won't know how to act with all this hot water. Looks good so far. This is a switch for the uh, 120. You can hit that and turn that on at the same time uh, to make the recovery quicker, but I want to try the gas first, then I'll try the electric. I put the electric, this draws 12 amps, it's on a 20 amp breaker, <laughs> but the whole camp is only 30 amps. So I don't have the 100, 120 plugged in. That, that refrigerator pulls 1.4 amps when it's on. So when the refrigerator's on and the water heater's on, I should be well underneath the 20 amps. Uh, time will tell, time will tell if that's true. Here's the cord. Here's the cord for the water heater. I just haven't got it plugged in yet. Yeah, I may not plug it in either. I mean, that's just for a case of emergency. I can always plug it in. Uh, yeah, if I don't have LP, I run out LP. I have uh, left some connections 
uh, for uh, a solar water heater for the future. So that's why the, I put the T's in there and uh, shutoffs and uh, bypass. And then I can, I got a drain. I can drain the water heater out over there. The cold water comes in and then I can tap off and go through uh, a solar water heater that I, I plan on putting on the roof. But that's a whole different video. Yep, that is. I'm happy. I really am. This worked out good. Uh, hot water. I don't know if you can see this steam or not. Yeah. Man, that is nice. Ah, steam up the camera. This didn't come with this uh, aluminum outside rim. I, I built that. I put more tight caulking sealant around, all the way around. Yeah, and I built my own uh, little flange, I guess, weather seal. Yeah, I think this, uh, I got this aluminum at Lowe's and it was $13. I don't know what it cost for a kit, but by the time I waited for it to get here, I already had this done, so. Thanks for watching. Man, oh man, I really do appreciate it. I hope you learned something. Uh, Bill Gaddy out. Really out this time. <laughs>